Hi guys, welcome to the Laura Studios. We're going to be talking about the Room Persistent Library. Uh, as we all know, the Room Persistent Library provides an abstraction layer over SQLite to allow fluent database access while enhancing the full power of the SQLite database. Uh, we're going to actually be creating an employee details uh, application where we get to uh, lock in the first name, the last name, the designation, uh, the title and some other uh, metadata of an employee, saving that right into the SQLite database. But this time we're not going to be using the contract, we're not going to be using the DB helper, we're not going to be using the content provider who will be uh, giving uh, room to, uh, for room uh, architecture to actually get this done for us in a very fluent uh, manner where we're going to be uh, using the live data to uh, keep uh, persistent flow probably if there's a change uh, in the database uh, this is actually going to tell uh, the view order and bind that to the uh, to the adapter so that that is actually going to show uh, consistently we're also going to be using the view model which actually is going to reference uh, to the repository and get uh, this done a lot of boilerplate codes are going to be abstracted away from this implementation so I will act actually implore you to step back and just uh, get yourself acclimatized what I'm going to show you right now and uh, within few minutes, we're going to actually understand how to set up a room database, how to use a view order, how to bind data to it, and how to actually display this right there in the recycler view. We are right there in Android Studio. I will employ you to use three, uh, the Android Studio uh, version of 3.0 and above uh, to actually get this uh, set up. And in the build grade, you need some implementations to get your life started with uh, the room database. Uh, you included the app compact, the constraint layout, the card view uh, to be able to have a card uh, flow and also the support design where we get to use the coordinator layout, the recycler view and some other uh, Android design, the material designs so you have that right there in the library uh, you should also include the implementation uh, the persistent room runtime uh, calling the uh, the version which is 1.0 we get to look at that in the big gradle and you have the persistent room compiler also very needed you need the persistent room testing if you really want to test uh the the, the integration you actually made and you need a view model and the live data the view model have the architecture life cycle extensions 1.1.1 and also the life cycle view model 1.1.1 we also have the live data uh which uh you have the implementation as well uh 1.1.1 version this is the latest version at the point of record in this video and you could also include the annotation processor which is the lifecycle compiler all these uh, inclusions are very important in your dependencies so after that you sync Gradle and get yourself ready to go in the build Gradle the project that's where we have the extension the room version and the architecture lifecycle version this is 1.0.0 that's the version we are using pointing that uh, to it uh, you also need to include the repositories the Google uh, uh, method over here and the JSON at this Google Merchant is very, very important. It's going to actually extract all needed dependencies uh, from the Google repos repository to uh, your code, and you have that uh, set up already. From here, I head straight down to the layout files uh, rather than the rest of the layout so we could understand the flow of this application. In the activity mail, which is the launcher, uh, we have uh, the coordinator layer wrapping around uh, the content main. Uh, which is actually included uh, on runtime and the content may contains what it only contains the recycler you could see that right at the, f uh, at the, at the far right corner over here where you could see the cards and the items with a floating action button uh, right at the bottom the bottom uh, end so let's get to look at the content main and also we'll look at uh, the activity to take in these fields these input fields uh, the content main it's a constraint layout where you have the recycler view sitting right there and pointing down to the layout, the recycler view item. Uh, this is actually the item uh, of each of these fields, probably the name, uh, the, uh, the title, and also the department. Let's get a look at the title, or uh, the item rather, the recycler view item. Uh, this is the card view where you have the relative layout right inside it and you have text views for different fields the name, designation, and the employee department, as I've said earlier. So this is where the binding is going to happen to this text view. 
the last layout we're going to be looking at right there is the activity new word uh, this is where you actually this is the input field this is like a form where you have the employee name uh, the first name and the last name the title and the department of the employee and the save button to actually save that to the SQLite database cool so that's just the flow and you have it wrapped around you could have more fields you could you know make it more robust you could add pictures i have done something of this nature when we are talking about using the content provider and also using uh, the uh, the contract and the db offer to save that to the database which are going to work uh, we're going to improve more on this we're going to extend more of the forms we're going to actually uh, do a crowd implement implementation to the value save to the SQLite database where you get to uh, create read and update and delete we're going to actually sync to the to, to the server so that's one thing we're going to add but I'll first of all add to the content provider implementation where we get to sync to the cloud before I come over here to actually get that set up over here too so cool that's the that's the form so look out for the IDs because we're going to actually tie that uh, to the implementation in the Java classes uh, we have a bunch of classes over here we have the main activity the new world which is actually tied to the activity new world we have the world uh, the, 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 the DAO uh, that's the data abstract object, uh, the adapter, the repository, the database, and the view model. Uh, so actually going to start from the main activity. The main activity, to start up with the uncreate and you instantiate uh, the adapter that you, you'll be using, which is the list adapter, and the recycler view, which is actually going to uh, uh, get those uh, fields, those items started up. Uh, so you get a new existing view model, uh, which you call the view model class. I will get to look at that later on and you add an observer on the live data returned and uh, unchanged method fires so this is where you're actually going to pass value to the adapter when the unchained method is being overridden and you have the list array uh, which is the words and you pass that to the adapter there's a method right then the adapter called set words and this is just like when you're swapping cursor uh, when you're actually using the the, uh, the loader and uh, that's just the abstraction. Uh, we have the floating action button that triggers the new world activity to actually get your form filled. So that's just what that is doing on click, which is overreading. Uh, the on options item selected as the overflow menu, uh, the toolbar, cool. And the on activity results, you're going to be expecting a value. Now we're going to look at this closely with the uh, form activity where you have the request code, the result code, and the intent data as the parameters to pass in. But I won't be going deeper here. I'll first of all look at the new world activity where the form is going to be filled and, and we're going to move here because it's just going to be an intent. And an intent, I expect the result is it's not just a mere intent. It's an intent with a result. So that's where uh, the main activity is going to cache that. Now let's get to the form activity. Just as we all know, we have the edit text for all the fields that we're going to be taking and you initialize them by finding their ID to the appropriate fields and at the same time uh, you trigger the button which is you set on click listener to the button where you override the on click method and what you're going to do the first if here is actually checking if any of the fields are not empty that's the first name the last name the um uh the the title and the uh, the department they must not be empty so if they are empty it's going to set the result uh, it's actually going to cancel the, the process and pass the reply intent that probably that's a problem or uh, the, uh, some of the fields are empty so you need to actually get an action done but if not it's actually going to extract the value by calling the get text and convert that to string and pass that to a string variable uh, which you're going to use an intent to pass and that's an extra and you, this time you're setting as a result not just a mere intent a result that ex a, an intent that expects an a, a result so that's just it here yeah. uh, you put the extra for each of the key values uh, the first key is the first name which you've actually uh, the key is the first name which you have actually stated right up here as a constant and you pass the value right in front of it and uh, you get the done you set the result with a key result okay that's result okay not result cancelled can you see the second uh, expectation result cancelled so that means it's not uh, good to go but once it's okay you'll pass in the intent that actually set up the, that uh, values which is the extras the first name the last name the title and the department so that comes back to the main activity and it's actually going to get this on activity results it expects those value now if the request code is and the result code is okay just like what you passed so that's just what you're expecting and uh, you call on the word uh, class 
this work class we get to look at that it has a constructor that takes those parameters that takes the first name the last name uh, the title and the department and now it's going to actually insert into the SQLite database so that's just what that's doing else that if the result is not okay probably there's an error somewhere it's going to say word not saved because it is empty you could actually go further to do some other things probably you could trigger that please fill this path or something else so that's just uh, how it flows now from here we we'll head straight down to the word class what is this word class doing uh, because we actually need it to tie values to the constructor right there uh, this work class actually going to import some of these uh, persistent room database we're talking about it imports the column info the, enti uh, the entity the primary key uh, this is just like a DB upper where you're trying to set up uh, the columns and also you're setting up uh, the primary key the uh, the not null, the null label uh, and also you could also set up the unique just like any way you set uh, your relational database uh, constraints. Now you have the table name as what table over there. That's the class. Now you have four columns: the first name, the last name, the title, and the department. And you set uh, the string values appropriately. You have the constructor right there. When you're going to pass those fields as the first, second, third, fourth parameters, and you initialize with the variable you have up here. You should understand this by now. Uh, you could also use a set method to actually get this done instead of the constructor probably if you are having a uh, large values like up to 14 fields to pass in you shouldn't use a constructor that's too large you could use the builder pattern where you set and also get that because once you set you're actually returning the value at the same time so now you just only get in since you've been able to set using the constructor you get the first you get the last you get the title you get the department you should understand this by now this is just making a pojo at the same time that takes you down to the word DAO, the data abstract object. Now, what we're going to do here, uh, this is where we're going to actually uh, include the live data uh, to the data holder class that can observe the within a given life cycle. So this is just going to observe what is happening. That's the live data now. But the, the word the DAO, now what's going to do, this is where you issue out the different uh, query you want, the select statement, the insert, the update, the delete, uh, the, the get different by table by so on uh, you sort by different uh, parameters and just the way you're going to manipulate your SQLite database so that's just it the first query is the select all from the word table order by the first name in an asset in order so that's just what this first chunk is doing and what it's going to do is going to return the list of that because it's just actually going to come in a list and this we're selecting a bunch of values from the database and the essence of this live data is just to keep tag on this value because the database might be changing now you might have input like four fields tomorrow you might have eight so the live data you keep listening just like what the uh, the loader is going to do for you when they keep listening to a change right there in the SQLite database so that's just what the live data is going to do we have the insert statement and we have the delete all that deletes from the word table we should understand that but you could even have more uh, SQL syntax to, 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 to play around with and now we'll be looking at the repository uh, the repository right there uh, is is actually uh, an, an architecture that is actually going to enable you to uh, keep track of the room where you're going to execute all the queries on a separate thread so that this is actually not going to uh, crash your application so if you're actually going to use an async tax you must call this on a non UI thread or your app will crash uh, like this the room ensures that you're not doing any long running operations on the main thread while by blocking the UI that's the insert method when you are inserting to the SQLite database you insert the you call the insert asyntax so you just don't insert directly to the database to use that to do that in a background thread so that's just what that is doing this is going further to do the action that you've actually stated in the DAO so that's just the repository and this is where you also can have uh, data fetched to the SQLite database from the server probably you're expecting uh, you, are, you, are, you are connecting to an API and you also want to insert to the server uh, to the database so this is where you're actually going to do it in an, in an async tax you could have you get you fetch your data at this point in time and you insert it using the async tax so that it's actually not going to uh, block the UI thread if you are uh, inserting a bunch of data you understand what I mean now you extend the async tax and you're doing background what are you going to do in background uh, you insert based on the asyntax DAO 
uh, which is the uh, the what the, the, the data abstract of the as I've said where we're coming from that uh, those are the methods that we're going to be using the inside the update the delete and so on so you could actually do each one of them on another thread not on the main thread so that's just that the room database uh, the room database is where you set up your database uh, where you have uh, the, 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 the version of the database where you initialize the database and get that working when you populate the database in the background uh, you have that set up using the ACC tags you could also delete all can you see where we've been able to delete all yeah and uh, we're starting uh, basically we're just pre-populating the database with some values so that's just it you always do that in an ACC tags cool now the view model uh, it's uh, to keep a reference to the world repository and uh, to keep up to date list of all words that you've been using uh, this is actually going to keep reference to the repository and uh, attach the live data to get all words to insert and to do some other manipulations right there on the database cool the last but not the least is the list adapter the list adapter is where you're going to bind values you're going to bind data you have the word list adapter where you bind in uh, to the recycler view adapter and uh, you call on the view order you should understand how to do this you first of all declare the met, uh, the fields the name designation employment department you initialize the fields you call its appropriate ids and you go to the view order you create that by inflating the layout the recycler view item that's the item we are binding data to and on bind view order you call on the order you set the name you set the designation you set the employee department and so on now look at the set words that i was that you actually called value to so it's just like the swap cursor as i've said earlier so you you, you need to trigger the notified data set change to this implementation you could also get item counts and get that set up and you have that uh, included this is just a very basic way to actually get yourself running with the room database architecture and you're actually going to use a lot of uh, uh let's say you, you're, going, you're going to abstract away from the lot of boiler code place codes that you've been using when you're actually dealing with SQLite database we're going to be extending more from this we're going to be updating we're going to be deleting and we sometimes uh we, we could get to the level to actually sync all the values we have from the SQLite database down to the cloud down to the server so we're actually going to be extending more from this and i'll employ you to start to uh, look around start to use the room the live data start to use the android architecture which was introduced last year 2017 uh, June to be precise and uh, this is actually come to stay for the developer experience now it doesn't change anything w using this uh, the database you've been known to, to use the contract the db upper and the provider still stand they are still very working and they are uh, uh, the, the, the loader manager very very working and this is just another abstraction uh, which is actually going to make the life of a developer much more easier thank you guys I'll be pushing up the, the, the the source code so that you could get your hands on it is actually going to be in uh, in branches because we'll be doing more and more stuff on this uh, particular implementation and i also employ you to uh to lay your hands on it and i'll be showing the screen screencast of how this uh, uh implementation looks and i'll employ you to stick by don't go anywhere uh subscribe to the channel and thank you very much for listening have a wonderful time bye bye for now